from the Dragon's Den to the Blue Peter Studio. His resident inventor in residence at the Science Museum. His designs include a magnetic chopping board, glasses with liquid-filled lenses, levitating cutlery, and the eye glamour. It's inspired by a gramophone that I saw in one of the galleries, which is exactly the same profile as that, and I thought it amplifies the sound of a needle on a record, which is quite a quiet sound. And I thought maybe you could use that to amplify your mobile phone. Please make some noise for Mark Champkins. 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 <laughs> Mark is using a 3D printer, which piles up 947 layers of quick-drying resin. Each layer is thinner than a human hair. This series, in conjunction with the Science Museum, will uncover those inventions whose designs are so well refined that it's very hard to improve upon them, and they found their way into our everyday lives. For me, one of the most defining innovations of the noughties, if you like, was Google. You know, Google's search engine, the algorithm that it uses to get information from the internet has been one of the most valuable and all-pervasive pieces of innovation, probably in history. Good inventions or good ideas come about from mixing together different industries or different ideas or things that come from different places and mashing them together. So I think it's useful to be interested in things and to be noticing things. The Science Museum, home to hundreds of years' worth of ingenuity and now home to their first ever inventor in residence, Mark Champkins. Mark explores the museum's exhibits and uses them as inspiration for his own quirky product designs. The best thing about a day that I have at the museum is when I come up with an idea, when I realise that there's something that can be done with one of the exhibits that will turn into a brilliant product. I mean, there's a real satisfaction of thinking, yeah, that's a really good idea. This is Hangar D3, and this is genuinely the first time I've been in here, so I'm really excited to see some of the stuff they've got. You can see, if I hold it up to the camera, there we go, and then twist this. You can probably see things going out of focus. And then if I twist it back, back into focus. So there, there you go, you can see they're effective. And then you set them, and you can see properly. Clever, eh?